reasonable number. And then, of course, the last one down here, you can barely see it, the state average for um, critical access hospitals to pay your bills, how quickly you pay your bills. Uh, the state averages with you pay your bills within 38 days. As of the end of um, December, it was 35, and we are at 47. Okay, so I'm going to get into a little bit of detail here. You know, I talked about us being a critical access hospital, and we are vulnerable. We are part of this group called the, the Washington Rural Health Access Preservation. It's 13 critical access hospitals that are very vulnerable. Garfield is the um, second smallest critical access hospital in Washington State. Um, East, East Adams up in Ritzville, based on their population, they have 3,000. And then there's Odessa, who's very close to us um, in population as well. And they are at risk as well. Um, it's interesting, Odessa gets, has a levy amount of about $580,000. So, what, hmm, there's a lot of detail on here, but what I want to bring out is operating margin by services. You know, we have to, because we are considered, in the eyes of the state, a level five hospital, we have got to have an emergency room nurse within five minutes. So that means 24-7 I have to staff an emergency room nurse to be at the facilities. Now, the provider can be within 20 to 30 minutes, but that nurse has to be there to triage. But we have to have a provider to be able to provide the care in the emergency room, which can be pretty dang expensive. So what this study that was done in 2015, you can see that um, specifically, did it again. Specifically for uh, the emergency room and these 10 critical access hospitals that were part of the, the program, which we were one of them, um, and we still are, that um, except for like Ritzville, you know, because they're right there on the highway, um, no emergency room is really making any money because of the fact that we don't have the high volumes. If you had higher volumes, you could pay for all the costs associated with that. And this RAP group was designed to try to put together a payment model that would fit for these hospitals in Washington State because we're not a one-size-fits-all. We're not Tri-State. We don't have the volume that Tri-State has, but yet we have to have the same nursing staff. We have to have the same providers. So our N, our N is what I'm calling it. Our numbers and volume is low, but we still have that overhead cost. And it shows here. Um, the same is true in uh, the clinic area, in the ancillaries, and in the long-term care. So again, sharing a little bit more about the critical access group, um, you can see that um, for Garfield we have a population of 20, 2,200. Our, this was based on 2015. Our ED visits per day are about one. Okay, and. Um, our acute census is about 21, and this study that was done, there was 19 visits on average each day for, for 2.53 um, um, providers in the clinic. So, and as you can see, um, these organizations have low census and low volumes as well. And so we need to be able to continue to develop a, a model that can help um, keep the sustainability and keep these um, facilities going um, in the rural areas. So now I'm going to get into a little bit of um, a little bit more detail. You know, I talked a little bit about the fact that uh, Medicare and Medicaid make up 63% of our revenues, um, but. We're also seeing some changes in how we're getting paid and how our services are being offered here. And I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible because um, it does have kind of a lot of detail on it. So what this is designed to do is to show you that, you know, in 2014 total, there was, we had people in the, as an inpatient in the hospital for 86 days. That's it. 
in total. Okay? In 2015, it almost went to half, 41 days. In 2016, it went to 34 days. So you can see that there's a shift in not having patients in, in the hospital um, than what we've had in the past, okay? That means reimbursement's gonna change. That means that you still have to have those overhead costs because if somebody comes in and they have to be put into an inpatient situation, we have to have those services. The other thing that's also changed is the swing beds. You know, if we have somebody that is rehabbing after a hip surgery or is part of the, um, our elder care program, again, we're seeing a, a shift um, in our swing beds. We started out in 14 at 7,534 days. Um, and that can be made up with a number of, of residents. Um, down to 60, almost 6,400 in 2016. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the reimbursement amount that we were getting over, uh, over here of um, $5,221 per day um, didn't, didn't change, but the expenses are still there. And in 2016, we were getting 2000 I mean sorry $5,283 which means that it doesn't matter your the payment didn't change but the the number of visits went down and what we saw um, on the swing bed side is is similar um, on the clinic we are we saw some changes there as well the the reimbursement rate has actually gone up in 2014 we would be getting a rural health clinic visit reimbursement of about $138. So if, um, if you came to our clinic, we would get reimbursed $138 in 2014, whereas in 2016, it went up to $176. And the reason that I share that with you is what we're seeing is that a stagnation on the inpatient side saying, we're not paying you anymore. I don't care what your volume is, your payment's going to stay basically the same, but we'll help pay you more, and then it's all based on costs, in your clinic, okay? And we'll get, we'll get more dollars if we do more outpatient type activity. Um, a little bit again about from the RAP group, um, the study that was done, um, you know, the, the commercials tend to help pay for emergency room visits. Um, what we see, let me see if I have that number for you. Um, what we see in the, in our facility, no, I don't have that number for you this evening, but um, we see on average, like I said, 1.25 to approximately two emergency room visits um, per day, and the majority of them are Medicare and Medicaid. All right, so what does it cost to run the hospital? So. And I have a slide, but total expenses on average in 2017 are about $610,399, whereas in 2015 it was $544,000. It has gone up um, about 12% per month, but you know, as we try to recruit, as we try to retain people, we can't stay stagnant with our expenses. The other part of that, which is really kind of interesting, if we had, if we were a bigger system, and because you look at this and you go, okay, salaries, wages, and benefits in 2013 were 68% of total expenses. That's high. The, the industry norm is usually 50% or less, depending on if there's any type of specialty in there. Again, we're working to try to keep that those expenses within reason. Um, and as of the end of July, we've got that at 59. This, these numbers will probably shift a little bit, but not a lot, because of the fact that we will always have to have staff, you know. Um, and so, you know, we'll always have to have somebody you know, processing payroll. We'll always have to have um, some form of um, billing practice 
and that. So those things won't change. So it does cost a lot um, to run the hospital. Oh, this slide got all messed up. Okay, so what I want to do here is again visit with you about some of the some of the things, some of the challenges that I've that I've had. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to talk about taxes. You know, every year by April 15th, or if you file an extension, you have to file your taxes. Well, what I want to show here is that um, as of the end of December, okay, um, in the month of December, and I came here in November, in December we had a $309,000 loss just in December. It's like, oh, what's going on here? So it's not quite right. So then, but year to date, it actually ended up being 156000 That's on the preliminary financial statements. So when we went back, because something didn't, something didn't seem right, something's not right, so we went back and had the financial statements audited. We found that uh, we needed to um, open up what they call a cost report. Um, that's like our taxes, let's say, uh, to determine what we get back. And it has to do with the clinic and it has to do with the hospital. And I don't want to get into detail because it's way too complex. But generally speaking, what we've done is we've had to open up our cost reports back to 2011 because we didn't quite get something right. And that's okay. We're not in trouble. But it's going to be to our advantage because we're going to get about $30,000 back each year for doing that um, and making a correction, number one. Number two, remember I showed you the slide that said there was a decline in inpatient days and uh, swing beds? Well, because of that, um, again, how we get paid is through this thing called the cost report. Um, because of the change in the model of how we got paid, okay, um, we got a bump up. What happens is the government says, you know what, based on this information we have, this is what we're going to reimburse you. And then what they'll do, like on your taxes, you know, you, you have your W-2 and you think you have the right amount of tax taken out, and then at the end of the year you go, oh, I don't have to pay, and oh my gosh, how am I going to come up with that money? Okay. The practice that we had on the financials, we were not monitoring this on a monthly basis. That, for me, as a previous CFO, that scares the bejeebus out of me because it causes a huge swing like that, okay? Because originally we were looking at a loss of about $156,000, which then once we trued up with the government, actually is $950,000 to the positive. So we put in process a means to be able to reconcile this every month. So like in taxes, you don't get that aha moment that you owe all the government all of this money. We're lucky that it went, that it swung the way that it did, but it could have been the other way, and then it, we would be in a world of hurt. So it's very important that we pay attention to this. Um, I've asked our CPAs to come in and audit um, our financials. I want to make sure that they're solid. Um, if you look in, if you contact the, the Department of Health, the State Auditor's Office, you will see that we had some serious problems in 14 and 15 to where they had a going concern about our ability to effectively do what we should be doing as a facility. So, with that, um, we'll move on. So what we've done, oh, I'm sorry, the, this got all messed up for some reason, but um, so what does it look like for, six, for 17? So we set a budget, and for 17 so far, our total income is about 600,000, 626 they're about, um, ahead of budget, um, but our expenses are also ahead of budget. Um, as you can see, I'm, it's unfortunate that you can't, but as of the end of April, it looked as though we were going to have a loss of about uh, $549,000, but with the work that we're doing to get this place turned around and get it cleaned up, 
the the loss is minimal. It's only seventy-two thousand dollars compared to the five hundred and forty-nine thousand. How have we been doing that? We've been doing better at um, capturing charges. We are doing better um, with recruitment issue, re recruitment areas and working with our insurance companies on better uh, reimbursement contracts, amongst other things. So now we'll transition um, into the strategic planning part of it. And did everybody get a copy of the strategic plan? It's very simple. It's just a one-page um, strategic So the board had a strategic planning session come January of this past year, um, and knowing all of the issues that came forward and all the things that we knew that had to be taken care of, um, there was a lot of cleanup work, there was a lot of um, things that we had to address from, from surveys to compliance to um, to chronic disease management and taking care of our elders. And so what we've done is we are working diligently to, to turn this organization around, trying to rebuild it, trying to create some sustainability. Um, you know, we um, are trying to bring great uh, providers here. I get a little concerned when I have a provider coming on site for a visit to talk about working here and living here, and he see he or she sees a sign that says hospital concerns, issues, come to a community meeting. Um, we've actually we've lost a few providers because of that, and that is to our detriment. That is that that's very hard for me to try to bring people here when when we have that kind of stuff happening. We need to work together to try to get the right model of healthcare for this community. And I'm working diligently to try to make that happen. So I want to bring out, I talked about, you know, we have our general operation things that we have to do. But we also have the RAP group that we're doing, trying to build a model of care. Um, I don't think you guys are aware, but um, the previous chairman, uh, Matt Hansen and I, went to the legislature last fall and we um, talked to them about getting money for RAP because of, we were looking for the good of the whole because we know that these 13 hospitals for which we are one, our numbers are so small but our expenses are so high that we felt that it was important to really let them know and get a flavor of what it's like in a rural setting when you have to be able to provide this level of care. So we were able to go to the legislature and we were requesting $2.2 million for this group to continue the effort to build a, these 13 hospitals. We got a unanimous vote and we were able to get that $2.2 million for the ER address um, shortfalls in clinic areas and startup of um, telehealth and telemedicine in um, in these areas is coming. It's coming in January. We're getting a piece of that 2.2 million, but it's coming. And that was a good thing for us to do that. We did it for the good of the whole and trying to get that model of care built correctly. The state of Washington is trying to make us go back to um, 2013 
um, their payment model that they had. When I went back and did the analysis and looked at what the payment rate was that they want to have us do compared to what we really were getting paid, there's an 8% difference.